Welcome to my channel. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. My name is John and today I have another milestone moment. It is the 50th anniversary of Aqualung by Jethro Tull. So before I begin, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I do rock and metal reviews, rankings and more and I upload about one video per day. So Jethro Tull's Aqualung is an album that brings back many memories for me. I remember having the album when I was younger it's an album I listened to a lot and it was very like intriguing to me because it was kind of like a heavy album. It was almost like an introduction to a heavy metal for me. It's just an album just completely filled with heavy riffs and it really made a big impression on me. I mean, um, this is technically not a metal album. It's more of like a progressive rock or folk rock or kind of hard to to kind of categorize it but it does have like this like proto metal like undertones and i'm going to be talking a lot about that during my review so jeff Tull is a great band it's probably a band that i listen to kind of like when i'm in the mood for them but uh, i would say that this is my favorite album out of their entire discography aqualung is their fourth album it was released on March 19th, 1971, and this is considered to be a concept album. The main theme of this album is about religion and God. Even though they said they didn't have an intention to make a concept album, the songs all have the same theme. The album was recorded in Island Studios in Morgan Stu and Morgan Studios. It is considered to be a progressive rock album, but some also consider it to be a folk rock album as well as a hard rock album. The album is 43 minutes long and it was produced by Ian Anderson and Terry Ellis. The album also features a painting which was done using watercolors by an artist whose name is Burton Silverman. He basically painted a long haired man with a beard and shabby clothes. This is a really an iconic album cover and one that has been very well known throughout the years. So the album starts out with a title track, it's called uh, Aqualung. And basically a heavy rock track, but with a flute. And, and just the flute is just very iconic. I really like the main riff on this song. I think it's um, just a really heavy riff. And the vocal, like the vocal delivery, it's even like very heavy in the verse section. And it's almost like he's singing in like this heavy metal style. And the song also features some like acoustic sections with clean singing. And it really offers like a different like balance between the heavy and the light. I really like the vocal uh, effects used on the clean singing um, throughout this part of the song. Also, this is one of the best songs or maybe the best song on the album. It's a very iconic song, but the next one is another great one. So after that is Cross-Eyed Mary. So in this song, uh, the flute plays the main melody but if you know uh, the band Iron Maiden, they did a cover of this and they play that main melody but with the electric guitar. And this song really converted into a heavy metal song very well. Also as a side note, this uh, Cross at Mary was the B-side to The Trooper that was released back in 1983 and you can also find it on their Best of the B-Sides album. But this is an awesome song, it has some keyboards and the sound of the keyboards uh, reminds me a lot of Deep Purple, of their sound like during this time, like the early 70s. Ian Anderson has a lot of very like heavy style in his vocal delivery. And like I said, this is just the perfect song to be covered by a metal band. So after that, the album just gets very soft. And the next song is called Cheap Day Return. It's a short song, it's only about one minute, 21 seconds. And it's just basically an acoustic guitar song. Ian Anderson sings the verse, but it's just basically a short song, mostly him and his guitar. You hear the band in the background a little bit, but it's just basically a short interlude. After that is Mother Goose. Now this is another acoustic song, but this is a full length, like four minute song, sung by Ian Anderson. It's mostly acoustic guitars and the flute. You do hear some uh, electric guitar in the background, like towards the end of the song. It's kind of mixed low, but this is kind of like more of like a folk rock song. After that is Wondering Aloud. This is another short acoustic song, a little under two minutes. 
and it's basically just like Ian Anderson singing and playing an acoustic guitar. There are some orchestral elements, but you're gonna notice with this album is that you have like the main like heavy songs, and you also have these like short acoustic songs that are like almost like interludes. After that is a song called Up To Me, and it's a really cool song. It's a folk rock song. There's some flute in it and guitars, and I really like how the flute and the guitars kind of play together. And what's cool about this song is that you hear the flute and there are also these like electric guitar parts which are kind of like played in harmony and it, they really like make it work together so this is another awesome song now there's still like a number of songs left on the album but i'm just going to talk about like the three most important songs just to keep this video at a respectable length so the next song i want to talk about is called my god this song is the perfect blending of folk rock and progressive rock the first two minutes of the song is just Ian Anderson playing his acoustic guitar and singing. But next in comes in the electric guitar part played by Martin Barr. And it's a really like heavy riff. I would even consider it to be almost like a metal riff. And I really like the interplay between the flute and the electric guitar in the song. And there's even a very long flute solo, some like chanting vocals in the background. I thought that was like really cool. The next song I want to talk about is Hymn 43. Now this song was covered by thrash metal band Overkill on their covers album. So you know this is a very heavy song. It starts out like a classic rock song, has a mid-tempo drum beat and a piano in the intro. But the pre-chorus riff in the song is, has this really like amazing rock riff. They use like the palm muting on the strings to kind of create this really cool sound. And this is definitely just one of the greatest songs on this album. And the last song I'm going to talk about is Locomotor Breath. This is one of the most iconic songs on this album. It starts off very quietly with some simple piano playing. The song has this very like iconic riff. Some amazing rock guitar playing and there's some electric guitar mixed in. There's a really cool flute solo by Ian Anderson. And this is also a song that's very popular among metal bands. I know there have been a few metal bands to cover it, but probably the most popular one would be the band Wasp, who covered it on their Headless Children album as an extra track. That is it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. What do you think of this album? You know, is it one of your favorites by Jethro Tull? Because for me, it's my favorite. But let's get a conversation going. Let's talk about Jethro Tull. And that is it. So I will uh, link a couple of my other videos. They should be appearing over there about now and um other than that i will see you in the next one